Hey, what's up guys? Will here for GSM Arena. These days, a lot of phones are coming out with strange or unique features that could compel you to spend your cash. And the Motorola One Action is no exception, with this GoPro-like action cam. But is that enough for it to stand above the mid-range competition? And what else does it offer? Let's find out in our full review. As far as looks go, the Motorola One Action isn't too surprising. Almost everything about the build is the same as the Motorola One Vision, which came out earlier this year. Its screen has a tall 21 by 9 aspect ratio, which makes the Moto One taller and narrower than most other phones. The back looks and feels like it's made of plastic, and so does the frame. Ours is in denim blue, and there's also a pearl white option. The back is shiny, with a textured pattern beneath the surface. As far as water protection goes, it will handle a few drops or light splashes, but it isn't fully waterproof, so try not to drop it in the pool. On the front, we have a 6.3 inch IPS LCD with a 1080p resolution. The tall aspect ratio reminds us of Sony's Xperia 10 Plus. One benefit of having such a tall screen is that you have more vertical space for text and scrolling apps. One thing I'm not a fan of is the hole punch cutout for the selfie cam. Maybe it's just me, but it seems bigger and more obtrusive than the ones I've seen on other phones. You can select from a variety of options to try and hide it, but these don't make much sense at all. Either applying a huge black bar across the top of the display, or applying a black area to a few other spots, for balance I guess. We also noticed light bleed around the hole punch, and around the bottom bezel. Content looks pretty sharp on this screen at around 430 ppi, but the other aspects of the display didn't impress us. We've seen better contrast on other LCDs, and colors aren't particularly accurate either, regardless of which color mode you choose. The screen's brightness is decent though, at a maximum of 460 nits. Since it's an LCD, there's no always on display, and there's no notification LED either. You'll have to catch the notification as it comes in and lights up the display, or wake up the phone periodically to check what's going on. Waking up and unlocking the phone is quite comfortable though, with the rear mounted fingerprint scanner. Its placement is good, and it's pretty responsive and accurate. The face unlock feature is another option for unlocking, but it's not as secure. The Moto One Action has a single loudspeaker on the bottom. Sound quality is decent, and it scored a very good rating on our loudness test. If you want to plug in headphones, there is a regular 3.5mm jack up at the top of the phone. Sound quality through headphones is impressive. It's loud and you get good clarity and stereo separation. There's FM radio on board too. And if you wanted to keep your own music and other content on the phone, you can do it no problem. There's 128 gigs of storage on board and it is expandable through microSD. As part of the Android One program, the Motorola One Action runs basically stock Android 9 Pie. You'll get the latest security updates, and upgrades to Android Q and R when they're available. The interface is basically what you'd expect from Android, with very few extra features. You can access the app drawer with a swipe up from anywhere, and the notification shade by swiping down. Quite handy so you don't have to stretch your fingers. You have a variety of gestures, or moto actions, that you can use to control different features. Gestures can also be used for navigation with Moto's custom setup. You can also use Google's pill setup, or on-screen navigation keys if you want to. And the Moto does have NFC too, if you wanted to use your phone for mobile payments. Under the hood of the Moto One Action is a mid-range Exynos 9609 chipset, along with 4 gigs of RAM. It's the same chip as on the Motorola One Vision. In benchmarks, scores turned out quite decent, and the phone offers dependable performance across the board. The UI runs smoothly, and gaming is pretty smooth as well. Thermal throttling wasn't a big issue. But now we come to battery life, and this is where the Moto One Action stumbles. It has a 3500mAh battery, a pretty decent size, but in our battery life tests it earned an endurance rating of just 66 hours. It's quite similar to the Moto One Vision, and it really doesn't hold a candle to some of the battery life monsters we've seen come out in the mid-range segment. With the phone's bundled 10 watt charger, charging speed isn't that fast. We went from 0 to 30% charge in half an hour. Moving on to the cameras. The Motorola One Action has a triple camera setup. There's a 12 megapixel main cam, a 5 megapixel depth sensor for portrait mode, and a special ultra wide cam which the phone is named after. Let's check out this action cam first. Unlike any ultra wide camera we've seen, this one is mounted at a 90 degree angle. It will record a landscape video even though the phone is in portrait orientation. While you can take videos with the main cam, 
The ultra wide is meant to give you a stabilized on the go experience, similar to a GoPro. It only shoots an up to 1080p resolution though. Thanks to EIS, the Moto One Action does a pretty good job of delivering smooth footage. There is no OIS or autofocus though. We did notice a slight jello effect in the corners, but it isn't a deal breaker. Even in a more demanding scenario like running, we were able to capture some pretty nice results. As far as quality goes, it's overall quite good. At 30fps you get nice detail, and colors are quite saturated. Dynamic range is good too. Switching to 60fps does take a toll on fine detail, but it's still decent. And we were impressed with the action cam's ability to capture nighttime footage which is brighter than many competitors. Now let's look at the main camera, which can shoot in up to 4K. Colors look nice, and dynamic range is about the same as the ultra wide, but the footage looks a bit overprocessed here, with some artificial sharpening. While you do get electronic stabilization when shooting in 1080p, 4K videos can't be stabilized, so you should have some steady hands or use a tripod. Now let's look at regular daylight still photos with the main camera. These look alright. Detail is decent and noise is well controlled, and dynamic range is pretty wide colors tend to look dull and muted. Unfortunately, you can't shoot photos with the ultra-wide action camera. It's only used for video recording. You can take screenshots while filming though, which come out at 3 megapixels. Portraits taken with the main cam and the depth sensor look decent. The results have good subject separation, though there are occasional imperfections as you'd expect. In low light, photos don't impress. They're generally soft, with washed out colors and some visible noise. Dynamic range isn't as wide as during the day, and you'll end up with some clipped highlights. And there's no night mode here to help things out. The One Action has a 12 megapixel selfie cam, which takes really nice shots in good light. They have great detail and spot on skin tones. Dynamic range could be wider though, and sometimes you come out underexposed if there's a backlit scene. You can take 4K selfie videos, which would be great if you want to do some vlogging, except these don't have stabilization. They're nice and detailed, but dynamic range is a bit narrow and you have to hold the phone the right distance away to be in the sharpest focus. So that's the Motorola One Action. You get stock Android, great audio quality through the speakers and headphones, solid performance, good selfies, and of course that unique ultra-wide cam for video recording. And plus, some people are just into that tall, narrow form factor. There are some things which I'm not a fan of though. The large hole punch cutout is kind of annoying, and the main camera's still photos are lackluster. But it's probably the battery life that's the most disappointing especially these days when so many mid-range phones are battery champions. Overall, the Moto One Action isn't a bad phone, and its price is competitive at around 250 euros, but those downsides I mentioned could be a deal breaker for a lot of people, and you can get ultra-wide cameras on many other phones, just not rotated. That makes it kind of hard to recommend this one. Thanks for watching guys, and see you next time.